Karina Gantis, your host for Behind the Pen. How's everyone doing today? I am an award-winning author of 14 books. I'm a podcaster, a YouTuber. I have my radio show, Author Assist, on the Artist First Radio Network. And I also run Author Assist, which helps market and promote uh, independent and uh, established authors. Today on my show, I have Coach Al all the way from the US. Hello, Coach Al. How are you? How are you? <laughs> I'm very happy to see you. I'm happy you'll be here. It's great to chat with you. Now, um, all of the uh, listeners to the show or the um, watchers, because it will be converted into audio. So we have the audio podcast and the YouTube show. Um, they can tell from your accent that you're not from the US. So where are you from, Al? Spain. All my family is from Spain. And that's why you have different accent than even Latin Americans in the United States. And how long have you lived in the States for? Wow, well, since the 1980 after the Olympics. Mm. And then after the Russia Olympic Games, and then I started to live here. Was it, was it love that brought you to the US or just uh, work? Well, in the beginning it was work, but the, and then I get married here. I have kids here and, and I do my life here. And uh, your um, wife is from the US? Yes, and the granddad, the, the, my wife's dad is from the UK. Oh, wow. <laughs> Yeah, where I'm He's from, in case man. anyone didn't know. <laughs> Very straight, and I love him. And you've been to the UK yourself? Yes, yes. Whereabouts? Yeah, beautiful, beautiful place, and uh, always uh, a little bit cold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, rainy. Were you in London by any chance? Yes. Uh, London is always raining in London. Always raining. If it's not raining, it's it's dark. <laughs> yeah, dark and grey and dismal. Oh, never mind. It is. It is. It has its beauty. There are places in uh, the UK that are very beautiful. A lot of history. A lot of history, uh, especially with the royals and uh, who who lo who knows how long the monarchy is going to last now when the Queen goes. Who knows what's going to happen? Anyway, um, so behind the pen is for anyone who holds a pen for work, it can be a artist, uh, an editor, a author, a writer, director, a um, musician. So what is your talent, Al? Well, when I born, I born with ADHD, but in, in those years, they don't say you have ADHD, they say you're stupid, you cannot learn. Mm -hmm. And then I, I learned with a lot of disabilities. My brother was with autism. And oh, wow. it was very hard at the beginning of the life, but, and then I started to learn how to control the mind. And I started to do sports. And when I started to do sports, I started to write a lot. I love to write poems. I'm very romantic, you know, in Spain, people are very romantic. No anymore, but we <laughs> was. It, but yeah, I started to write what I think was the correct way to, to live. And the, my first book was a, about how the mentality of the athletes when they compete. Because they, I noticed one thing, when, when an athlete compete, not always the most talented uh, athlete win, is the most strong mentally. And then I start to write what happened inside their minds of them, how they represent the world, and how to represent their intentions in order to get there. What it's, sort of, um, um, when you say athletes and sports, what is it that you coach? What is it, what kind of sport? Well, I coach uh, several sports, but mostly gymnastics. Oh. I coach gymnastics at the elite level. I have two Olympians and five world wow. championships. Wow, congratulations. Thank you. Well. Is is their work? Is their talent? Yeah, but because uh, you coach uh, several kids, and not everybody get there. No, of course if not. You have the same coaching, the same attention. Uh, of course, of course, it's but the person it's that got the medal, but for, it's you. It's you that to, to push them. It's you that drives them. It's you that gives them that um, that drive to want to win. And so, yes, you should be congratulated for having two gold medalists uh, in your team. 
most definitely. Yes. Yes, and, and then uh, my, my first aspect is the mind, how the mind works. And then over the time, I discovered one thing that the most important is the mentality in your personality. That's mm -hmm. why I write that book. Mm -hmm. Personality is, is your personality or your identity who make the difference. And, and it's what I start to investigate, how the personality take a role in your life and your success and your failures. And you love and everything and personality means a lot when um you you were young when you discovered you had the um a is it a h you have to ADHD. thank you can you explain to those that have never heard of this term what that is well i start to find out that i cannot concentrate and and at the same time, I concentrate too much in the things I have a lot of interest. If I was watching a TV program who I really like, somebody can call me, I cannot even hear. I cannot even blink. You just and they say, gross. hey, I'm screaming to you. Sorry. I think when I was in the school, everything distracted me. Everything. Because ADHD is like a everybody has priorities over the five senses mm -hmm. you have the visual the auditory the kinesthetic uh, and then one is majority one is dominant in adhd all is main wow. you receive all the information at the same time with the same importance mm -hmm. with the same strength and then Ooh. everything can distract you i mean it's so everything. confusing confusing it's very confusing mind. yeah it, it, that's why it's, I notice uh, kids with, with that problem, even adults with that problem, they have a lot of troubles. They, they make mistakes everywhere. And they start to create a guilt inside them. How, how do you control it? I mean, I'm, I'm assuming it's not medication. I'm assuming it's your mindset that you can control this condition yourself. Yes. The mind works in, in, we have the two personalities, the core personality and the covert personality. The core personality is the personality you says you are, like your skills. I'm mm -hmm. a doctor, I'm a, I'm a coach, I'm, I'm some, somebody. But the core personality is all your programs. Is everything what is inside you who dictate who you are. And those programs, if they don't, don't have any connection for, with your reality, with the opportunities you have, and then start to uh, collapse each other and cancel each other. And then what happened, the subconscious might not let you succeed. But that means your personality, your dominant personality is making more difficult your life. It's what happened inside the mind. And, and the only way to change it is retrain your subconscious mind. Because uh, just imagine that you have a, an elephant and you mount in, into the elephant and you command the elephant to go to the right. And the elephant starts to go to the left. The left. You say, what happened here? And then you command the elephant to stop and the elephant starts to run. And you says, do I doing my commands wrong? Yes, you're doing the commands wrong because the, the elephant was trained with different commands. And then what happened, whatever command you do is not what you are thinking you are doing. The subconscious mind is the same. How You give certain commands, but you train your mind to respond into a different way. But how can and you, how you can surprise you retrain, yourself. How can you train your mind? How, do, how does it work? How, what do you need to do to train your mind to get the correct way of thinking again? First, you need to define what is the correct way. <laughs> because the, the way everybody's acting, they think this is the correct way. Mm. You never hear nobody saying, I'm wrong, but yeah. I will tell you what I think. No, they, everybody thinks they are right. Mm. And then they need to define what is right and what is served them better. Because uh, 
you don't get the results. It's not the, the circumstances. It's not the opportunities you have. It, 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 those are the symptoms of the problem you have. And the other problem you have is yourself. Mm. Nobody else can get the results you get. Only you, because you have that programming. The difference between one person who trained the subconscious mind and one person who don't train the subconscious mind is consistency. To, to back train the subconscious mind is exactly the same. You are very consistent to be negative, to be uh, criticizing people, to, to see the negative side. And when you start to change that, I create a program, it, it's a book who is quantum books. The quantum books is used to change the subconscious mind because the subconscious mind has only three ways to communicate to the, the external world. Is symbols, colors, and codes. It has no words. Whatever person who is talking to you and with logic motivates you, the emotion only, only can last long for 60 to 90 seconds at the conscious level. And then you get excited and you need to remind that emotion and you need to remind that emotion again in order to get an state within the inner. In, in the moment you start to take action and you see adversity, the emotion gone. But when you retrain your subconscious mind is when the subconscious mind start to get all the ability and the progress to support what you're doing. That's why it's important for us the, define, the definition of what is success for you. Because success, you remember probably when you was 15 years old, the, this concept you have about success is not the same one you have now. It's totally different. The circumstances change. You, your skills change. In 10 years from now, probably you will have totally different uh, thinking about what success means. And then that's the confusion about the human beings. They define the success when they were kids. And they feel guilt because they cannot fulfill it now. And they have the guilt from those beginner years. The first seven years of your life is when you create your subconscious mind. That's why the kids believe everything that they hear. And then when they, they create the critical mind and they, they create the conscious mind, they don't believe you anymore. I don't believe in Father Christmas. <laughs> yeah. And when you start to study and when you start to see the roots of everything that happened in, in history, because uh, my son is historian, and oh. then he started to tell me things that I never imagined was like that. Especially why? What happened right now with the news you hear? Are not the truth. The, when you hear the news, are not the truth. How you can know the history of the world in the news they give you, they have an intention. Oh, of course they do. No, never never believe anything you read or see on TV. They they show you what they want to show you. They 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 show you they what they want you to believe. And only yeah. if you were there and saw it with your own eyes, then you see the truth. I totally agree. And then what happened History, though, is not made in the news. It's not made for, from the news. Mm -hmm. It's made from the evidence they found in fossils, yes. in fossils and in, in the earth. Yes. Like, um, evidence. I, 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 I love science. And I start to see uh, how the, the people start to say the climate, cl climate change, mm -hmm. the, all that kind of... The, what happened when you go to the desert and you make a hole, big hole in the desert, what do you find? Shells. You find life from the ocean. What happened? The, what happened is used to be the, the, ocean. the desert now was the ocean before. Was the ocean before, yeah. yeah. I, and then I, if you yeah. go to the ocean, you find things from the desert at the bottom. Yeah. You go to, to the North Pole and you find things from the desert too. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. you find trees, you find a lot of things. What does that mean? I, I study engineering. I was going to ask you about this. You, you're so knowledgeable when it comes to science and the mind. Did you study oh, you. all this or did you research it? Was it uh, something you did at university and you got really interested in and carried it on? Or was it because of your condition, you wanted to learn more of how to cope with it and how it worked? So you did your own research. Both ways. With since kid, since I remember, I asked why. If they tell me, make that hole, why? What is the purpose of that hole? Mm. And I always I ask why. I study engineering, civil engineering, and that helped me to study later sports psychologist. And then later I, st I studied for a coach because gymnastics coach is very complicated. The sports mm. coach is very complicated because put aspects of the body, the mind, and the, the nutrition. It's everything, when, yeah. And then when, when I start to, to think about something, I always look at for the answer, why that happened. And then I, I noticed in the earth, when, when the earth started to make, you know, like a, the volcanoes start to uh, expel all the insides of the earth, what happened? All the this uh, what was inside now is outside, changing the weight of the air. What happened with rains? All the sand and sediments go to the ocean, and the ocean is more heavy and more heavy and more heavy over centuries. And then, if you have the earth like this and the axle is here, what happened? The axle change because the weight is changing, and then. What was desert now is the North Pole. That's scary. But was North Pole now is the desert. That's the scary thought that is. But it takes centuries. Mm -hmm. It takes too long. It, we cannot even notice it. No, the scientific good. says then uh, South America and Africa was together. Mm. You see the, the edges concede each other. And then, but over the time, start to separate. Yeah. And always, when you try to find the truth, you believe what you hear, because the human being always represents the behaviors they have in base of what they believe. If you believe what you hear right away, but you don't research or you don't ask another sources, and then you will believe what you hear. Mm -hmm. And then you get bad results because it's not the truth. It's not the truth. Yeah. The truth is very complicated. You need to open your mind and get new skills. That's why the, the last book I started to write was illness doesn't kill you. The mind does. Because the mind is killing you. Mm -hmm. Not the pandemic, not the illness. Mm -hmm. I noticed that one day, uh, a young guy in, in Australia get uh, an attack from one shark. Mm -hmm. The shark was a no bad bone, but the guy get in so much stress, he get in panic and he died. He lost all the blood. It was not the bite of the shark, it was the, Him. the mindset he had. Yeah. I seen in Spain, one old man, 96 years old, getting out of the hospital, barely working. And, and he says, the only reason I survived the pandemic is because I don't care if I die. I'm happy living. And everybody was afraid to die and they die. I think um, it works the same with cancer as well. I think you have to have a very strong mentality and believe in yourself and believe in your body. And not that you can cure yourself of cancer, but you can beat it by a stronger mentality. You're right. And how you can get a stronger mentality when you have internally all that mix of guilt and, and problems inside you. Because the, the subconscious mind just work in the present moment. And I, like I explained to you before, 
just has three ways to, to, to think, by quotes, by colors, and by symbols. Mm -hmm. And the subconscious mind, you try to talk with the subconscious mind very positive. No, I, I'm, I'm good, I'm good, I'm happy. And the subconscious mind says, no, you are not happy. You are worried for what happened when you were seven years old. You are worried what happened when you were 16 years old. And you are guilt for what you did when you were 21. And then the subconscious mind don't let you be happy until, until you change the frame. Mm. Let me explain what the frame means. Just in mind that you see a, a man running in a big, next to build, big buildings, like New York, running the guy. And you see only the man running and an old lady working towards him and the guy pushed the old lady and the old lady fall. Can you call him a hero? No. No, right? But now you see the whole picture. You see the man running, a big block of concrete was falling in the <laughs> head of the old lady and he pushed <laughs> her. Out the and, way. And now you see the whole picture. Mm. You cannot see him as a criminal guy who pushed an old lady. You see him as the hero. Yeah. And then yeah. what happened? when we have our mind the way it is. We don't see the whole story. Just we've seen part of the story. Yeah. This is why I explained the book. You, you need to discover the whole picture to really have a better view. So how many books have you published now, Al? Uh, until now, three. Gil or Joy. This is one of my favorites. Because you, you choose. But your guilt or you or you get enjoy. And then when when you get guilt, go to the subconscious mind and don't let you do nothing. Yeah, you get Absolutely depressed anything. And, yeah. And then what happened, the, the subconscious mind dictated even how much uh, mentality you can have and how much body you can have. Majority of the people you think, I will train so hard to have the best shape of my life. What is behind the mind give, the, give you the results, not the training. The training don't do anything. The, the, the only way to get results is with your intentions. And then if that person is sacrificing everything to do the best shape in their life, what happened? They get worse. And they said, I, I cannot believe this, this problem I have. I'm getting worse and I'm working and dieting and doing the, my best of my life because the programs, internal programs are against him or against her. You think what happened with your intention change. The intention is not to lose weight, it's not to be in shape, it's not to be the champion, it's to enjoy the process to get there. It puts you in a different mindset. It puts you in a positive mindset, which then gets the exactly. ball rolling and makes you think differently. We reframe everything. And now you enjoy the process, not the results. Because what happened when, when you put your attention into the ending product? You see only what is left, not what you progress. Mm -hmm. And what creates the motivation? Progress. But you don't see it because you are watching how much is left. Yeah. It's like the half, the, the glass is half empty. No, the glass is half full. It's how you look at things. Yes. And I know when I was a kid, I hear that about the glass. And I said to my mom, but depends if you are drinking from the glass or you are putting drops to the, to the glass. I can see this half empty or half full. What it's action you are taking way. over the glass? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I have- You know, um, I think a little bit different. No, no, it's, no, it's good that you have that. Uh, it really opens up uh, a lot of possibilities and for people that are watching or listening now can, can understand where you're coming from. Um, I have fibromyalgia and it affects the, the pain uh, receptor in my brain. 
And so what a stub toe, you would have maybe a three, I would have pain up to a 10 from stubbing my toe because the pain receptor in my brain is, is uh, gone from uh, there to there. Um, yes. And with fibro, it also stops you, it causes insomnia. And of course, with insomnia, your brain's not working very well because you're tired. And yeah. um, you then get the depression. You then get um, some mental uh, difficulties, trying to remember things and to think of things because your brain is tired, your body's tired. And it, it's exactly what you were saying, that um, when you fall into that hole, it's difficult to get yourself out, back out with a, a good mentality and think, um, positive things when you're in that hole how do you get out of that hole well like i explained you first we need to change the frame of where you live when my sister has the same problem that you have mm. i start to see all the problems she has she cannot sleep she cannot leave she she was in pain all the time and i explain to you now what i explained to her pain is a, a messenger of what's going on inside. And then the messenger bring you the news of what happened. Just in mind that you're sleeping in your room and in the second floor, and because you was working all night and you start to, to, to sleep during the day. And somebody start to knock the door very aggressive. And then you open the window and you says, what's going on? The house is in fire, get out. And you says, no, I'm so tired. I need to sleep. No, get out. Do you think, because you tell them, get away, the messenger who tell you if the, the house is in fire would let you die? No. The pain is over there to tell you that something is wrong. Mm. It's not the pain, the problem. It's what creates the pain to give you the message to you. It's something internally who creates that a messenger coming to you. Like a, just another example I, I will give you. What happened if you receive mails and mails and mails with bills? You kill the, the mailman, all the bills stop? No. No, and the bills keep, keep going. Coming. <laughs> then it's the same thing with you, fibromyalgia you have is something internally. And the doctors just give you the medicines to, uh, uh, to calm down, the pain, calm down everything, but the main problem is still inside. And then what we need to do, make a regression inside your head, go back in time, the subconscious mind, all the answers for everything. And then when we go back on time, what happened? Your subconscious mind will know, oh, in this point, we don't have any problems. Was after this point we had problems. We don't need to know even when the problem was or what happened or who made the problem. The only thing we need to know is when start. Mm -hmm. Because the mind works with the a timeline in the brain. Mm -hmm. We have a past or a future of, of, of future in the front and future in the past or up or down. Some way your mind is creating that. When you start to create an, an event and you create an interpretation, you start to suffer or you start to be happy. Mm -hmm. If something was good, you are happy. If something is bad, you start to suffer. But when you get that trauma, you was probably around five to six years old. And then a new experiences start to connect with that one. And a new experience start to connect with that one because we or brain works by association. You think when you accumulate too many, the body says, no more. Or you solve these problems, or I will send you messages with pain, with headaches, with depression, with anxiety, with all that kind of things. If you don't solve this problem, I cannot handle it anymore. You think what happened, if you reframe what happened in that moment, because when you was probably five or six years old, you don't have the ability to think like you have it now. Mm -hmm. But 
the energy you create in that moment is still bothering you. And then what happened, all the energy you create when you get an emotion, emotions are energy. They don't find a way to go and they go into one body part. The energy establishes right there. He said, okay, mm -hmm. I will wait until if that person fix the problem. I will wait here. And then another emotion come. So, oh, we have two now. And then until you have a group, a cluster of emotions stuck in one part of your body and you start to suffer consequences. The only way to, to clean it, when you clean the first, the first emotion you create, all the emotions has different meaning. And guess what? You like change. That's it. Uh, it, it sounds like that's the miracle pill that everyone needs is, is, is what you've just uh, said, but uh, it's easier said than done. But uh, where can, um, it's, it's been a pleasure chatting with you and uh, I hope we can uh, continue on in a moment. But uh, for now, where can people find your book, Sal? Well, you go to www.kelbrin-wellness.com. Wonderful. And you will find right there uh, several programs and and how to work to change your stress and mm -hmm. how to change uh, everything in your life. If you want a, a special consultation with me, I can help anyone because uh, I have the tools. Over the years, I get all the tools, all That's the things excellent. to help anyone. I will put that uh, address on the end of this uh, video so people can uh, go and uh, check out your website. Is it also on Amazon, your books? Yes, yes. The personalities is in Amazon. Okay. And, and are you and, on social and, media? Yes, I have a, in, in, in Facebook, I have a Twitter. It's just Al Kelvin. Wonderful. The name Kelvin comes from the mix of the names of my kids. Oh, wow. Yes, because my last name is Garcia Sanchez. <laughs> Nobody can say that name, but very <laughs> easy. And then when my kids start to grow up, I open a gym, a gymnastics place, and I put the names of them together, and then I put Kelvin. Now everybody say me, Mr. Kelvin. That is so beautiful. Well, Coach Al, it's been a real pleasure chatting with you. Thank you so much for coming mm -hmm. on Behind the Pen. And I wish you all the best with your future work, your courses, um, your um, gold uh, medalist gymnast. I hope uh, everything goes well with the next Olympics and you're able to uh, get someone over there. And, and it goes ahead, of course, depending on uh, the virus and everything. And I wish you all the best with any more books that you write. Thank you so much. Thank you for you and have a wonderful week.